Appalachian Musicians presents Pioneering Women of Mountain Music, featuring Samantha Baumgartner by Mason Winfrey. The music of the Appalachian Mountains created the bedrock for what we know today as country music. The distinct unification of the fiddle and banjo weaves a thread through the history of American folk music that dates back long before the advent of recorded sound. In the early 20th century, the phonograph record introduced a new way for audiences to consume music, and with it, produced an industry that would eventually turn country musicians into household names. In 1935, Ruby Rose Blevins became the very first woman to record and sell a million copies of a country song, a tune she recorded under the name Patsy Montana called I Wanna Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. Seventeen years later, in 1952, Kitty Wells would become the very first woman to claim the number one spot on the Billboard country music charts with It Wasn't God Who Made Honky Tonk Angels, a feat that took nearly a decade after the charts first premiered. Patsy Montana and Kitty Wells are now heavily regarded as pioneering women of the country genre, but eleven years before the release of I Wanna Be a Cowboy Sweetheart, in three years before the Carter family would make their way from Clinch Mountain to Bristol, Tennessee to make their first recordings in a session now dubbed the Big Bang of Country Music, a woman born into the old-time music tradition of Appalachia would record the traditional songs of her childhood and garner the distinction of being the very first woman to make an old-time country record. On the banks of the Tuskegee River, in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains of North Carolina. Samantha Boomgarner was born Sarah Samantha Biddix on October 31st, 1878. Her father, Haz Biddix, was a locally renowned fiddle player who would sometimes provide musical accompaniment at local square dances. Ironically, even though Samantha showed interest in music at an early age, her father forbade her from learning how to play the fiddle, for some people in the mountain communities perceived the instrument to be sinful. Going against her father's rules, Samantha would sneak his fiddle while he was away in order to practice playing music on her own. After realizing Samantha's musical talent, has reluctantly gave in and decided that she could have an instrument of her own. But instead of getting her a fiddle, Samantha's father built her a banjo out of a gourd and cat hide with wax thread used for strings, an instrument that which she would excel. In 1902, at the age of 23, Samantha married Kars Boomgarner, who was very supportive of her musical talents, and gifted her a fiddle of her very own. Samantha competed in her very first Fiddler's Convention in Canton, North Carolina, where she won first place in the banjo category. We was in Canton, she said at the event, and they was having a Fiddler's Convention. Somebody entered me in the contest. It was the first banjo contest I was ever in and I was nervous. I knew I couldn't hit a string. I tell you, I was so nervous I didn't know I was hitting the strings. But I won that contest, and I've been winning them ever since. Building her confidence, Samantha Boomgarner started competing in contests across the region, and more often than not, would walk away with the top prize, beating out her male counterparts. Even though Samantha was reluctant to pursue music professionally, because of her success in the competitions, she was approached by Columbia Records and presented with the opportunity to travel to New York City to record songs from her repertoire. In April of 1924, Samantha, along with guitarist Eva Davis, made the trip to New York City where over the course of a two-day period, they recorded around a dozen songs, including such notable standards as Big Eyed Rabbit, John Hardy, Fly Around My Pretty Little Miss, and The Worried Blues. Of the songs recorded during those sessions, eight of them were released and sold reasonably well throughout the Appalachian region, with copies being discovered as far north as South Mountain area in Pennsylvania and as far west as the Alleghenies in West Virginia. The recording sessions that produced those records serves as a historic moment in the history of recorded country music, for Samantha became the very first woman to record an old-time country record and her moderate success served as a precursor to the 1927 recordings of the original Carter family, which featured Sarah Carter on auto harp and singing lead, and Mother Maybell on the guitar demonstrating her innovative style. 
Samantha Boomgarner also bears the distinction of being the very first musician, man or woman, to play a five-string banjo on a recording. In 1928, folklorist Bascom Lamar Lunsford founded the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival, a three-day celebration of the folk traditions of the Appalachian region held in Asheville, North Carolina. Samantha Boomgarner performed at the festival during its second year and would go on to become a yearly staple, performing there every year until 1958. It was there at the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival in 1934 that a young musician by the name of Pete Seeger saw Samantha perform and felt inspired to pick up the five-string banjo himself, for it was the very first time that he had ever seen one played. Samantha passed away on Christmas Eve 1960 at the age of 82, but left behind a legacy that continues to inspire old-time mountain musicians to this day. Her trailblazing career paved the way for the likes of Hazel Dickens, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, and Rhiannon Giddens, and her scope and influence continues to be felt nearly 100 years after her initial recordings. This project is made possible by a grant from the Blue Ridge National Heritage Area Partnership.